Hi there, it's Chester at Blue Pecan Computer Training, and in this video we're going to look at creating dependent drop-down lists. In our scenario, I've got column B, where I want my regions to appear in a drop-down list, Ireland, Midland, North, Scotland, South, Southwest, and Wales. And then depending on which region I select in column B, I want the relevant branches for that region to appear in column C. I want these drop downs to appear in multiple rows, all rows as and when I need them. And also if I add more branches to my branch lists for each region, I want those new branches to appear in the drop down list in column C. So how do I do this? Well, your first step is to convert just about everything on your worksheet to an Excel table. So we'll start with this little table here where eventually we want the drop down list. So what I do is I click into a cell and then I can either go to insert table or use the shortcut key control T. Now you do need to tick this option here. My table has headers, but really that's all you need to do. So I click on OK and I've got a table. The reason we're creating table here is that if we apply settings to the first row within a table, for example, data validation drop down lists, they are automatically going to get copied down to subsequent rows that we use within our table. Then what you want to do is to convert each of these individual columns into tables as well. So not the whole range as a table, but each individual list of branches for each of those regions into an individual table. So I'll start with Ireland and Belfast, select both of those cells, control T, and it's already worked out that I've got a header there, so I can just click on OK. Then what you need to do is name that table. And you have to name it exactly the same as the heading that you have at the top of your table. So this one's called IRE. Then I'm going to do the same for Midland. So I select those cells, control T, click on OK. I'm going to call that mid. And then I'm going to do the same for each of these columns. Now, once you finish that, you can go over to column B or wherever you want your first drop down list. And to create the drop down, go to the data tab on your ribbon, click on the data validation button. And then in this dialog box, you want to say, you want to allow a list. And the source for that list is gonna be the column headings at the top of all your tables. So I'll click on okay and you will then see you have that list of regions. Now, the second drop-down list, the one that's dependent on the region drop-down list, how you get that is you go to the data tab, data validation again, and again, you're gonna allow a list, but you have to write a tiny little formula for this list, and you're gonna use the indirect function. So you write indirect, open bracket, and then click into B4. Now you want to take the dollars out of that reference and close the bracket. So this is a way of indirectly referring to the tables that we've named, the same as these column headings, which we're also referring to in this drop-down list. So I click on OK. Now you can see with the Northern region selected here, I only have the branches in the north. Now to create the next record within this table, easiest thing to do is to click in the last cell in the current record and then press tab on your keyboard. That creates a new row in your table, which will automatically have the drop down list. So if I choose Southwest here, then in this drop down, I'll only see the one branch. Now, if I was to add Weymouth to Southwest region, you will see that that new branch automatically appears in this dropdown. Now, one little caveat here, if your column headings have spaces in them, this 
whole thing kind of falls down. But what you can do is put underscores between the words within your column headings. And then when you name your tables, also put that underscore in. The reason why spaces don't work is because you cannot have spaces in table names, but an underscore can be used in place of a space. The other thing you'll probably want to do here is to either hide these columns or move them kind of out of the way so they're not visible to your end users. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you have, please subscribe and I'll see you next video.